Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On. In part one of our review, we unboxed and inspected it. Now it's time to flight test the Walkera Rodeo 110. Three, two, one. But just before we fly, my recommendation for spare batteries are the Turnergy Nanotech 852S. They're a perfect size and C rating for this quadcopter. However, the connectors on the Rodeo 110 are JST and I tend to use EC2 instead. And so I'm going to make a simple conversion cable. I cut the JST connector off the supplied battery and solder an EC2 male onto the other end of it. I then replace the battery connector with an EC2 female and my cable is then complete. Click the link on the screen now for a guide on soldering EC2 connectors. Finally, I was going to give a tour of the Rodeo 110 flight controller configuration, but Walkera have let themselves down again by using a proprietary build. This prevents the latest Betaflight app from connecting to it. <coughs> It looks like they've done this by changing the version of the onboard firmware to 033, which tricks the latest Betaflight into thinking that it's a very old version. And so instead you have to download a custom Betaflight build from the Walkero website, install the unpackaged extension manually in Chrome, and only then can you configure the Rodeo 110. I'm going to film a follow-up on how to flash a clean and latest vanilla version of Betaflight to this quad and get it configured, so subscribe right now for a notification. When will Walkera learn? Anyway, enough of me, it's time for the fun bit, the flight test. Right, so we're all ready to go. Um, remember that you have to arm this one using the rudder control, unfortunately, but I will do a tips and tricks video as I did for the Rodeo 150, which shows how to change the arming to a switch. Right, so arm it like that and up we go. Now I'm in stabilize mode at the moment, which means basically you can't loop or roll. So if I do the extents of the uh, aileron left and right, you see it won't actually roll or go inverted. <clears throat> so this is a good beginner's mode, intermediate mode, if you're still learning. So it's very, very quiet in the air. Those props are obviously nice and efficient. Flying it into the wind at the moment. Sorry, flying it downwind at the moment. And it is a windy day. So this is really testing my piloting skills to walk around it whilst the wind's blowing it around. Um, but it looks really good in the air, actually. Try and get a bit closer to it but the wind is really picking up ah oh, why is the weather like this in England hey so <laughs> let's take it on a bit of a circuit it's a very solid stable flyer very easy to manage your altitude and throttle on this as well I don't know why it just it's very light so I'm about mid stick at the moment obviously when I go into wind I'm having to give it a bit more nose down to get it penetrating but yeah it flies really well really really nicely okay all important punch test so let's do the punch here we go so three two one yeah that's good i mean it's not massively powerful but yeah, i think it did a really good job it's a 110 class so it's slightly bigger than the other mini brushless quads that we've been testing recently but I think that, was, um, that wasn't bad at all. Let's do that again. And remember, this is only a 2S quadcopter. This is an 850 milliamp battery pack. So here we go, three, two, one. Yeah, not bad. Wind not bothering it in the slightest during that punch really as well. Seems to be nicely tuned as well, straight out of the box. We're not getting a lot of uh, rotor effect. As we descend, if I cut the throttle, yeah, it's obviously not, air mode's not enabled on here. So as soon as you do cut the throttle, the props stop, which is not good for acro. Speaking of which, I'm going to switch into intermediate mode now, which lets me do this. Whee! <laughs> and this. Yay! <laughs> so without air mode enabled, you've got to be careful not to cut the throttle completely because it's really not very graceful if you do. 
as you can see. <laughs> so this is basically a, a nice mode for, for learning FPV, but realistically you wanna be in rate mode, which is the next switch setting, but I'm not gonna fly it, Loz, in that mode because it's a bit of a headache to do so. It's not particularly easy, especially in wind like this as well. So overall, I'd say that's a nice Loz flyer. Let's very quickly do a, a, an LOS speed test. So I'll take it a little bit away from me and then I'll fly it past. Okay, turn it around and here we go. Yeah, that's quick. As with the other walk carers, um, the flight controller has a lot, has a very limited pitch built in there on stability mode. So that means that when you do go full throttle, you're not pitching forward enough for it to just go forward. So you will find it climbs in altitude as well. So for example, if I do that now, it will go up instead of just across. There you go, see? So just do bear, um, do bear that in mind when you're flying it and you're going full throttle. Now, of course, in rate mode or in intermediate mode, as it's called on here, and um, acro mode, that's not a problem. So we're gonna land it now, and then we're gonna try an FPV flight. So I've got my camera angle set quite high on this one, and the first bit of advice, when you first get this quadcopter, there is a small bit of lens protection film on the lens itself. Remember to remove that, because otherwise you're gonna get a bit of a blurry picture. Um, the picture in general looks lovely. I'm just gonna pick up the quad, actually, just to see what it looks like. Really, really nice. The way it handles with the brightness and the ground is very, very nice. There's not a lot of change there you know some of these cameras are really really poor but this one looks quite good it's a very very wide fov however so getting through those narrow gaps if you're flying between trees might be a little bit tricky but we'll have a look we're gonna got, we've got some goal posts over there so i might just give those a bit of a try so let's give it a go so i'm going to go straight into rate mode here i'm not going to bother her with um stabilized going to arm it there we go and take off So it feels very, very stable as it did during the LOS flight. Very nice. And you know, when you fly an FOV, you don't particularly feel the wind because you're subconsciously compensating for it. In terms of signal, VTX is doing a good job. This is only a 25 milliwatt. Uh, hardly any breakup at the moment. I'm using a fat shark here. With Triumph antenna and also a, a patch from TBS. Let's do a bit of a roll. And you can actually hear I've got a battery out now. So that's following on from my LOS flight before. So that battery's lasted quite some time, as I predicted, about two to three minutes or so. Not bad at all. So I'll land it and change the battery. So battery changed, we're back online. Lovely picture, lovely sky, and actually a really beautiful day for a test flight on FPV. Now remember we don't have air mode enabled and I wish I'd have done that actually before this test flight because it does kind of limit your options in terms of acro, but hey, let's go up. So we're in acro mode, which is advanced basically. The start of a bit of a punch, oh, lovely. And yeah, it does go very smoothly this. It is windy though, and heading into wind, you can feel that choppy element of the wind affecting it. So let's go for a bit of a range test just to see whether we can invoke a little bit of breakup. Now I know that the edge perimeter of this field here is about 100 meters when we hit that path and we're just getting a bit of break up now. Um, I'm sure we could probably go further, but I'm not gonna risk it, but we're just gonna a bit of break up there, but nothing significant. Okay, pick up speed a bit here. Oh, I'm being blown all over the place now. Heading into wind, the weight of this quad does have an impact because it doesn't penetrate quite so well. 
but it's not doing bad considering it weighs only 100 grams or so I think not doing too bad at all and now I'm flying FPV you know I'm full throttle most of the time so you really can hear it screaming and it does sound lovely let's do a bit of a flyby there you go lovely sound roll rate is good not bad at all let's do a bit of a loop Whoa, the wind is almost blowing me over now. <laughs> it's getting very, very strong. But overall, yeah, I, this is a nice little flyer, but just typical windy day. Now, I've got the battery dead beep, well, battery approaching flat. So I'm gonna land it down now. And um, overall, a really good flight, nice flyer. Straight out of the box, this thing flies brilliantly. So yep, quite impressed. Let's summarize the Rodeo 110, starting with the positives. It has a really high build quality and it's well constructed, feeling quite premium. The design is minimal and whilst it isn't lightweight, it isn't heavy like the F210 and even the Rodeo 150. It features one of my key requirements with mini brushless quads, a voltage and loss model beeper. You get around three minutes flight time, which is far better than the Rodeo 150's flight time of barely two minutes. It's really easy to bind it with the Devo 7 transmitter if you already have one from another Walkera model. The FPV camera is very nice with really efficient light handling and a nice clear vibrant picture. I bumped it into the ground quite a few times during my test flight and it suffered not even a broken prop so it is quite robust and fairly crash proof plus parts are easy to replace and buy. And finally, if you already own a Rodeo 150, your batteries will fit the 110. They're also nice and cheap. Now onto the negatives, which you can probably guess already. It uses proprietary speed controllers, which means you can't swap them out easily with third-party alternatives. But of course, my core issue is with its flight controller firmware, a custom Betaflight build. It can't easily be configured without first downloading the Walkera Betaflight configurator or flashing a vanilla Betaflight build to it and configuring from scratch. Walkera really need to learn on this. There's no heads up display for battery level or fuel usage. These are really useful with little quads. It's quite expensive. There are many 100 to 110 class budget brushless quads on the market at around half the price, although their build quality isn't quite as premium as the Rodeo 110. Finally, I felt that it would benefit from slightly more power. Not lots, but just a little bit more just to make it truly special. Overall, the Rodeo 110 from Walkera is a great looking, well-built quad, which flies and performs brilliantly out of the box. Although you'll want to get air mode enabled pretty quickly if you're going to be venturing into acro, and I will show you how to do that in a future tips and tricks video. But despite its premium price tag, you do get your money's worth as soon as you take off. The camera is lovely and the PIDs are tuned really well, although it is frustrating that to alter anything, you've got to flash beta flight or install custom configurators. But most beginners won't be doing that. And so for someone who wants to pilot straight away in FPV and just get flying, the Rodeo 110 would be a good choice. I really hope that you've enjoyed this review. Please hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. And I genuinely want your comments, positive or negative. So please add one below. Tell us what you think about the product, about our reviews and about the channel in general. And finally, thanks of course to buzzflyer.co.uk for sending us the Rodeo 110 for review. And if you order from their website and mention droning on in the order comments, they've committed to throw in a free second battery for you. So you'll get two. Thanks again for watching.